evening, Austin, Texas. This is Co-op HD1, HD3 Hornsby. Radio for people, not for profit. Welcome to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Each week we explore how your library is more than books. The library is knowledge, technology, and inspiration for our community. I'm your host, Mike Wheat, along with... And I'm Kanye Lyons. Today we have Zarissa Klein and Sharon Herfurth on the show to talk about the Adult Summer Reading Program. Welcome, y'all. Hi, guys. Hi. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yes. Thanks, thanks for, coming. for coming on. So tell us a little bit about each of you. Um, like, where are you from and how did you come to live in Austin, for starters? Well, I grew up in a small community in the northeast corner of Dallas County. It's called Rowlett. And... I was working at the Dallas Public Library, but I was married to a man who was living in Austin. Uh-huh. And so to keep domestic harmony, <laughs> once our son was born, one of us had to decide to move, and I was the weak one who <laughs> gave in and moved to Austin. But I haven't regretted it. We're glad awesome. you're here. <laughs> and that was Sharon talking. So. Yes. And no, Zarissa. That's Zarissa here. How'd you end up here? Uh, well, I ended up here from... I graduated in San Antonio, and I liked Austin a lot better, so I moved up here, <laughs> and I went to grad school, and I volunteered at the library, and I was like, oh, this is nice here, Yay. so I ended up doing library science and working at the library. Oh, so volunteering at the library was what got you interested in working at the library? Well, my mom had always made sure we had a library card. We moved around a lot, and no matter how tiny the town, she always took us in to the closest place with the library, got us a library card. Oh. We watched Star Trek a lot at home, so I had to get my sci-fi fix. <laughs> and so I've always been in libraries, been around libraries, loved books. And it wasn't until I was at home, it's like, wait, I could be at the library all day, every day? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. Yeah, no kidding. Well, so- and, and wasn't it... Uh, Zarissa started her volunteer work at the library at the North Village branch right. where I was working. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure it was my inspiration. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I saw yeah. Sharon and I to knew. Be a librarian. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, Sharon used to be the uh, library manager over at the North Village branch before she came down to the Folk Central and started working over uh, Kanye and I. Yeah. In our department. The AOPP. Office of Programs and Partnerships, which yes. sounds pretty ominous. <laughs> but, but it's not. <laughs> All good things brought to you by well, AOPP. <laughs> so what inspired you to become a librarian, Sharon? I wouldn't exactly say inspired. I would say I was about to get out of graduate school and I had no job prospects. My mother took me to the Dallas Public Library where they were having a career coach. Uh-huh. The career coach took me through some exercises and things and said, well, have you ever thought about working at the library? Mm-hmm. And I hadn't before, but I started thinking about it, and we went from there. So the first one you worked awesome. at, was that in Dallas? Yes, in, that was in Dallas in the, the uh, mm-hmm, at the downtown library in the fine arts department. Oh, that's, well, that's fitting for you. Yes, and I became a music librarian, which was my job I loved the most of any I've ever had. What did, was that like just keeping up with the music collection or what all did it entail? It was keeping up with the music collection. We had um, music scores, thousands of music scores. We had 45,000 LPs. Oh my goodness. People checked out. Uh, We had um, course books and magazines about music. We sponsored concerts all the time. We did exhibits for uh, local music groups, for instance, the when the Dallas Symphony had their 100th anniversary, we had a lot of their archival materials, so oh, cool. we did an exhibit for them. Oh, neat. Yeah, if you're just joining us, we are chatting with Zarissa Klein and Sharon Herfurth, and uh, soon we'll be talking about Adult Summer Reading Program. Um, but we're going to continue getting to know these two. So Sharon, what, what in your background got it to where you specialized in the music side? Well, <laughs> my uh, background studies were in music, in the history of music, and in oboe performance. Oh, cool. So, I'm trying to dig out what I actually know about her, and you are also a singer. <laughs> <laughs> Outed. <laughs> and here she goes. She's going to sing a song for us right now. <laughs> uh, maybe another time. All right. <laughs> All right, well, we'll stick to subject then. <laughs> 
So Zarissa, um, you started, you, you said something about your mom took you, even if you were in a small town, to a library. Does that mean right. out of town? Like if you guys didn't yeah. have one in town you were in, she would take you to the near we city? We had to drive like 15 or 30 minutes sometimes because my dad found houses in the middle of nowhere with like orchards around them, which are pretty, wow. but there's like nothing out there to do except run around outside, pop your bike tires on the rocky roads, right. <laughs> and read so we would go and check out like the max of books i read all the time my mom would ground me from reading (laughs) (laughs) which is very frustrating (laughs) what else am i supposed to do um so that was well that's some dedication does she get to walk around patting herself on the back now that you've you know you've made it to reference librarian status she was very proud she passed away a couple years ago oh i'm sorry Mm. to hear that all good. But she, she was a bookworm. And then as I grew up and I was like, wait a minute, you're not using the bathroom. You're reading for <laughs> 20 or 30 minutes at a time. <laughs> well, you were probably restricted Busted. from doing so, right? Yes, yeah, while I was grounded. <laughs> hey, that's not fair. No. So, did you ever participate in the summer reading program when you were a kid? I did. I loved it. I like went and saw magicians. I won like all the prizes they offered i went and read and filled out the whole list like that was the exciting part of the summer for me to go do yeah yeah i would like fill out like a sheet and turn it in like you know the same week and they'd be like you know this is supposed to last you all summer i'd be like i need another one i need another (laughs) one (laughs) that's right there with you wow that's not listed on the rules (laughs) i think you're allowed to bring as many as you can (laughs) it's true so uh, what, what uh, does anybody remember about where this program started, how it came about with Austin Public Library? The adult, the adult. The adult summer reading program, specifically? Um, I was looking up the background on that. Um, it looks like we started having adult summer reading uh, programs about 10 years ago. This is our 10th anniversary. Ooh, Ooh that's exciting. 2007. Happy birthday program. Yes. And so what, like, what was kind of the thought process behind it? Um, It was a way to encourage adults to participate in summer reading along with their children. But you didn't have to have a child to participate. (laughs) (laughs) We can't let those kids have all the fun, right? No, no. Yeah, and I think there's like a nostalgia, at least for those of us that grew up doing the the summer reading program as kids. It's like, oh, wow, they have it for adults now? Yeah, we wanted to cash in on that (laughs) nostalgia. Well, and two, because of a lot of demand from library users, this year we brought back the adult summer reading challenge. So not just kids can fill out the list of books, but there's a challenge for reading books or trying out new things that goes along with the little bookmarks that list all the events that are going on this summer. So if you go to the library or if you check out the website, you can see that there. And anyone can do any of these things. Yeah, it's all open to the public, and uh, it's just for adults, so 18 and up. We have plenty of other stuff for kids, so they're not getting left out. Yes. There's pages of pages of stuff for kids. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole separate but, program for your kids. <laughs> and then uh, all the details are online at austinsummerreading.org, in case people are interested. And uh, we are about to play a little song. We're going to take a short break from this interview. We're going to come back and learn more about the Adult Summer Reading Program. But we're going to play a song called Historia de un Amor, which is performed by a local group called Trio Los Vigilantes. And they specialize in boleros from the Mexican Época de Oro, which is the Golden Age. And uh, after the song and a few announcements, we'll talk more about the Adult Summer Reading Program. No estás más a mi lado, corazón En el alma solo tengo soledad Y si ya no puedo verte Porque Dios me hizo quererte Para hacerte sufrir más Siempre fuiste la razón de mi existir Adorarte para mí fue religión 
en tus brazos se encontraba el amor que me brindaba, el calor de tu pasión. Es la historia de un amor como no hay otro igual, que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal, que le dio luz a mí. Noche tan oscura, todo se me ha de volver. Ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón. En el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puedo verte, porque Dios me hizo querer para hacerme sufrir más. historia de un amor como no hay otro igual que me hizo comprender todo el bien, todo el mal que le dio luz a mi vida apagándola después ay que noche tan oscura todo se me ha de ya no estás más a mi lado, corazón, en el alma solo tengo soledad. Y si ya no puedo verte, porque Dios me hizo quererte, para hacerme su Texas Talking Book Program provides digital audio, large print, and braille books and magazines to Texans who cannot read standard print due to qualifying visual, physical, or reading disabilities. Reader advisors are on hand to help navigate patrons through thousands of titles available for download to our free digital audio player. To see if you qualify or for more information, visit www.texastalkingbooks.org. You're listening to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. On Co-op 91.7 FM, Hornsby, Austin, radio for people, not for profit. My name is Blair Parsons, and I'm a reference librarian at the Falk Central Library. The adult summer reading program kicks off with a bike crawl Saturday, June 3rd. Tour the East Side Branch libraries, as well as historical places of note, on this bike crawl led by Bike Austin. The event kicks off at the Carver Branch Library Saturday, June 3rd at 10 o'clock a.m. with Taco Deli Breakfast Tacos. The summer reading program continues Saturday, June 3rd with an ice cream social at the House and Branch Library. The band Honey Punch will play fun songs and crafter extraordinaire Jennifer Perkins will lead a craft program. Plus, there will be ice cream for all. The House and Ice Cream Social is from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock Saturday, June 3rd. Monday night, June 5th, the Twin Oaks Branch Library will host Pam Bauer as she leads participants through Succeed in Life, Say Yes to Failure. Pam will discuss what it means to fail, how important it is to fail, and steps you can take to fail your way to success. The program begins at 6.30 p.m. Monday, June 5th at the Twin Oaks Branch Library. All right, and welcome back to the Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Uh, before those announcements, we listened to the song Historia de un Amor as performed by Trio Los Vigilantes. And Trio Los Vigilantes will perform at the Ruiz branch on Saturday, June 10th from 2 to 3.30 in the afternoon. That's right. This live music performance is just one of many adult summer reading program events at the Austin Public Library, which details can be found at austinsummerreading.org. 
That's right. And now we're going to get right back into our studio conversation with uh, Sharon Herfurth and Zarissa Klein. And we are still talking about the Adult Summer Reading Program because it's awesome. Yes. <laughs> and because tomorrow is June. Right. Yes. So, like, what overarching theme kind of inspired this year's collection of programs and activities? Well, the theme for that uh, happens every year is Book Your Summer. It's about reading. It's about events happening and things to add to your schedule that are interesting. And we also went with the Build a Better World, which is the part of the Texas State Library theme, where we wanted to emphasize community, diversity, sort of the huge ethnicity that we have here in Austin. Absolutely. And there were a whole bunch of people working from all sorts of different branches, different divisions of the library that are running these different programs, and we're all working together to provide a huge variety of different things for different interests and different activities to come to throughout the summer. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, I see lots of multicultural events here listed. And uh, so one I want to talk about is the first one coming up. Can you tell us uh, what it'll be like to participate in the bike crawl that's well, happening on the third? If, if I'd ridden a bike any time in the last 40 years, <laughs> I might be able to. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to be you first can, in line. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there will be, it'll be a very interactive experience. Bring your helmet, bring your bike. Join everyone for breakfast tacos at the Carver Branch Library at 10 a.m. And then you get to experience a very unique opportunity. There's going to be uh, the Austin Bike and Square Six are going to be there. And there's going to be a tour guide riding in a pedicab. Oh, cool. They'll be sort of going along the bike line, sharing historical information about the landmarks you pass in East Austin. Oh, killer. That's fascinating. And That's really awesome. Awesome. And you, then you get to stop at the different branches along the way, get some snacks, refill your water, and learn about that area. And then everyone meets up back at the Carver Branch Library, and there'll be some tables and things there. And this is for adults 18 and up? Yes. Open to the public? Open to the public. Come on out. It's going to be a great time. That yeah. sounds like such a and cool like you program. said, you're, you're leading by example, adults, so wear those helmets. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So if you're just joining us, uh, we're in the studio with Sharon Herforth and Zarissa Klein. Today we're talking about the Adult Summer Reading Program, and this is Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. That's right. So what about the three events collectively known as the Art of Script? Let's talk about those. Well, when you hear script, uh, it's a little different than writing or handwriting. Script is a little fancier, Mm -hmm. it's a little more decorative, and so we've got three specialists coming in. We've got, we're starting out with Red Rider Studios who are having a sign painting specialist coming out and she is inspired by a lot of the vintage designs. If you've gone around Austin, you've seen her sign work and she's if going to... If you've ever seen our... Um, mobile bike. Mobile bike. That's yes. right. Our Central Our bike. library, she did the artwork on that. That's correct, mm-hmm. yeah. Norma G. Maloney runs and operates... Um, Red Rider Studios. Uh, she's been in Austin, and she's also featured in the film Sign Painters. It's a documentary, so uh, she's definitely well known in that industry across the nation. So it'll be a treat, I think, to see how she goes about painting letters. That's mm-hmm. super cool. So sign painting is one of the three script programs. Yeah. And, and it's then... more of a demonstration, not so much hands-on. It's really just to show the process. I think is that. Yes, yeah, she's going over the process, the history, her all about her and her style. But then with the next one, uh, Calligraphy with Holly Zayner, she is going to not just be talking about the history of calligraphy, she's also going to show you how to do it, and Ooh. we'll have special calligraphy pens and paper available so you can try it out too. And That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited about that one. And then uh, in addition to the calligraphy, the third one's going to be on brush lettering with Ashley Austin, who is going to talk about that history. There's going to be paintbrushes and watercolor paper available. And, you know, I don't know if for whatever reason you might be making signs in Austin. This is a great (laughs) opportunity to learn how to make some fancy letters through their signs. Work on your typography for them signs. That is so cool. Yeah, brush lettering is great. It's definitely uh, one of my favorite things to practice. There's 
you have to know a few rules about strokes and then it starts opening up. So I'm pretty sure that this one little demo will give you tons of skill. Mm -hmm. So um, I understand you guys are also showing some films, uh, specifically uh, Pedro Almodovar films uh, this summer, like three of his classic Films. Yes, yes. Those will all be at the St. John branch. The screenings will be. And it's one um, a month, right? Yes. Cool. One in June, one July, one in August. Uh, in June, we're going to have the film Talk to Her. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Yeah, a funny movie. In July, Women on the Verge of a Nervous yeah. Breakdown. <laughs> Ooh. It's not the story of librarians. <laughs> <laughs> it's the story of my life. Yes. No. <laughs> And in August, all about my mother. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. Classic. And Ooh. these are in Spanish with English subtitles. Correct. Awesome. So, again, the multicultural theme kind of coming up. And, um, Man, so one I know that my wife is actually really excited about is adult hoppy hour and miniature crafts. <laughs> a lot of folks are really excited about that. So and it's this... not a typo, guys. That says adult hoppy hour and miniature crafts. <laughs> they will... don't mean beer. There no, will literally be bunny hops. rabbits. <gasps> but it's just for adults. No, it's yes. 18, 18, 18 up. and up. Adult hoppy hour. Yeah. This is a chance for you to maybe... Re unwind, de-stress, hold a chinchilla. What? You know, they're like the softest <gasps> creatures ever created. I saw hedgehogs so in the cute. advert. There will be a hedgehog? There, there will be a hedgehog. Oh my little tiny bunnies. There's a little turtle. Oh my god! <laughs> there, there will be over 25 animals oh at the god. hoppy hour. <gasps> and Enough to go around for everyone. They're hypoallergenic and little pads will be provided for your lap if you're worried about staying clean. Are, oh. you, are you saying that most of the animals they'll have on hand are hypoallergenic? Yes. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And then the miniature crafts, it's it's with uh, it's clay? With Rita Wing. Yeah, it's a polymer clay craft. And the first, there's going to be a different craft for each hobby hour. <gasps> yeah, there are four different nights that we're doing this. So if you do the craft at each hobby hour, you can get four unique collectible items that are made from these Made Adorable. by yourself. Made by yourself. You get to make your own stuff. Make There's your own like swag. A oh little, gosh. <laughs> little tiny miniature cacti. Ooh. There's little gnome mushroom houses. Oh, you gnome how much I love that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yuck, 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 yuck. <laughs> so the first one is going to be at the Manshaka branch, June 16th, 7 to 8.30. And that is with Tiny Tales to You and Rita Wang doing the uh, crafts. Mm, and then yes. and when we talk about diversity, there's also some LGBTQ pride going on. We got a couple of concerts, it looks what? like. Yes, more live music. Yes, to these enjoy. are a group, the Las Cabachachas, are a local band. They write music. They <sighs> sing classic songs from Cuba and... Mexico and Spain, and uh, they speak Spanish, and then uh, they also are going to be performing in August as the Therapy Sisters, so oh. they s sing in Spanish, and then they also sing in English, and each performance, they write a lot of their own music, they're a group that supports LGBTQ uh, activities and groups in Austin, and we're really excited to have them out and showcase their particular talents. Great. So we have the same players come in on 624 as the Los Capachachas. That's the June the 24th, 230 to 430. And then at the Yarbo branch on 820, you're saying it's the same musicians, but under the name the Therapy Sisters. Yes, yeah, same That's musicians, awesome. different band. And also we're going to have yeah. a some... a. Uh, signboard where you can write supportive messages for the LGBTQ community, take a photo, post it with the hashtags, and sort of show your support for Austin as a diverse community. Yeah, supportive messages. That's exactly. great. We're almost out of time, but I just wanted to quickly mention a couple of other programs. Yes. There's a Fronds of Glory where they're going to be making flower crowns and yes. uh, boutonnieres for the gentlemen or, you know, for anyone really. And then there's going to be bilingual coloring time, right? Yes. And, and don't forget Harry Potter. <gasps> Harry yes. Potter. Harry, Harry Potter for, for adults? adults only. Oh yeah, my goodness. Guys, 20th guess what? anniversary. We're, we're going <laughs> to be having woodworking tools to make wands. Oh. Yeah. It, it, they're not just dolls. These yes. are some like serious wands here. That's I know one a bunch of adults that are going to be so excited about that. <laughs> that was one event that made me feel old. I can't believe it's already 20 years old. Yeah. 
right. we need one for adults too. <laughs> well, guys, you know, time flies when we're having fun. Uh, we've had Sharon Herfirth and Zerissa Klein in the studio, and it's been a lot of fun talking about the Austin Summer Reading Program, which again, you can find all the details at austinsummerreading.org. Thanks so much for joining us. And now, enough about adult events. Are there parents out there looking for fun things to do with their kids? We have two expert youth librarians who are going to tell us about some upcoming events that are specifically for kids at the library. This is Ann Minner, youth librarian at the Old Quarry Branch. I get to highlight some information for children this week. Summer slide is the tendency for students to lose some of their achievement gains they've made during the previous school year. And one of the most effective ways to guard against this slide is to read. It doesn't matter what type of book it is, chapter book, graphic novel, magazine, nonfiction, they are all wonderful at keeping the slide away. The Austin Public Library helps keep kids interested in all sorts of books and materials with our summer reading program. It is super easy to participate. Kids read books, Kids come get a prize book. It's available for all ages. Also, there are lots of fun programs going on at local branches. More information and lists of all the upcoming events are at austinsummerreading.org. Hey there, Austin. Teen Program Specialist Michael Harley from the Downtown Falk Central Library here with a rundown of tween and teen events happening across the Austin Public Library system this week. It's a great week for the movie lovers, with two showings this week for Star Wars and comic book fans. A whole new adventure from the other side of the Rebellion is finally revealed in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, showing at the Carver Branch on Saturday, June 3rd at 12 p.m. Meanwhile, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, reality is turned upside down, and only one man can put it all back together, Doctor Strange, showing at the University Hills Branch, also on Saturday, June 3rd, at 2 p.m., as part of their continuing Saturday movie matinee series. Rogue One A Star Wars Story and Doctor Strange are rated PG-13. We're so excited that So Happy is back. Yeah, that was corny. Patrons can take up needle and thread to create fun felt creations at So Happy at the Man Shack branch on Tuesday, June 6th at 5 p.m. All supplies are on hand, and So Happy is recommended for ages 10 and up. It's Tabletop Tuesday on, no surprise, Tuesday, June 6th at 5.30 p.m. at the Falk Central Library. Find classic games like Jenga, Monopoly, and Settlers of Catan alongside new favorites like Sushi Go and Super Fight. With school out for the season, the Austin Public Libraries are ready to fill your summer with geeky goodness during the That's So Fandom Summer Reading Program event. Teens ages 13 to 18 can draw, voice act, animate, cosplay, and more during a series of programs happening throughout the months of June and July. More details on these and other exciting programs happening at the Austin Public Libraries can be found at library.austintexas.gov slash events. Support comes this is from Ann Ivory Minner, Bean Youth Coffee Li Bar, serving organic, fair trade coffee and espresso drinks, as well as a selection of beer and wine seven days a week. You can chill in a hammock on the patio where dogs are always welcome. Located at 2310 South Lamar Boulevard. For more information, visit Facebook or IrieBean.com. Live, love, be Irie. We spend long time in this reggae band. All right, welcome back to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Uh, when we can, we have time, we'd like to get some highlights on stuff. And I think this week, Kanye has something she wants to talk about. Yeah, a little bit. I would like to say a few words about the Austin group, Trio Los Vigilantes. We listened to a song earlier in the middle of our interview talking about the Adult Summer Reading Program because they are going to be playing uh, at as one of the programs for the Adult Summer Reading Program. Uh, the CD that we listened to, or the, the song, was off of the CD titled Adoración, which features classic boleros from the Mexican Época de Oro, or Golden Age. And uh, honestly, like I was just blown away by the guitar playing and the harmonies on all six tracks. Um, as far as I can tell, it looks like it was produced locally. Um, and we have three copies of the CD in the Austin Public Library's Latin Music Collection. Um, Trio Los Vigilantes will perform at the Ruiz branch on Saturday, June 10th from 2 to 3.30 in the afternoon. And of course, that's open to the public. Um, and this one, even though it's for adults, uh, it will also be open to families. And the, um, there are details available at austinsummerreading.org. 
Yeah, I guess that means there's actually two copies in the system right now because you're holding one. I'm going to return this like first thing in the morning, man. <laughs> All right, it'll be available. <laughs> awesome. Well, again, thanks to Zarissa Klein and Sharon Herfirth for taking time to come onto the co-op studio and talk to us about the summer reading program. And uh, thanks to our hardworking volunteers, Sev Corson and Federico Pacheco. And I want to throw in one last thing. Uh, this is our last night at That's 7 right. p.m. next week. We're going to be on the air 2.30 to 3 p.m. every Wednesday starting next week. Yep. Uh, and we'll be over the airwaves, 91.7 FM co op We're going to be day trippers. That's right. Join come, us come then. Come join us then. Bye. We can- Thanks for listening to Volumes, the Austin Public Library radio show. Details at library.austintexas.gov slash volumes. Want to give a special thanks to our audio engineer, DJ Harris, and our volunteer production assistant, Sev Corson. And thanks to the musicians who composed and performed our original theme song, Andrew Noble on violin, Kirk Duvall on guitar, and APL's very own Mike Wheat on percussion. Volumes, the awesome public library radio show, airs Wednesdays at 7 p.m. on koop.org community radio.